to visit our website, covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, for the latest information about how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community during this pandemic. At this time, we now have in our state four deaths from COVID-19. We want to express um, and extend our sincere condolences to the family and friends of those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. For a situation update locally, uh, we want to let you know that Lincoln has had one new case of COVID-19, which was reported this morning. That brings the total in Lincoln and Lancaster County to nine lab-confirmed cases of COVID-19. Eight are travel-related, with the other one being community-acquired or community-spread case. Interim Health Director Pat Lopez is here to provide more details on this latest case, and I'd like to invite her up to provide those details. Good afternoon. Um, the health department received notice of the uh, next positive case this morning. This is an individual in his 30s who traveled to Dallas on March 11th, returning home on March 16th. And as the mayor said, this is a, another travel-related uh, case for us here in Lincoln. The onset of symptoms was on March 21st, at which time the individual self-isolated at home. Uh, he was tested on March 26 for COVID-19. All of the close contacts of this individual are quarantined at home at this time. As we said, eight of our nine cases are travel-related and one is community acquired. We are continuing to see an increase in testing in Lancaster County. It has, been, it has helped with both Bryan Health and CHI Health having more options for testing. Through Tuesday, Bryan Health had tested 400 people for COVID-19 at its drive-in drive site at LifePoint over that time period of last week. CHI Health has also begun a drive-through testing site at North Star High School yesterday. Again, to access these drive-through uh, testing sites, each person makes an appointment and has a doctor's order for testing. In Lancaster County, we now have 396 negative tests and we currently have 35 tests pending uh, results from the public health lab in Omaha. The Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department is also monitoring 95 individuals due to travel history or exposures. Nebraska um, has now has 290, 210 cases of COVID-19. Um, uh, I believe our community understands the seriousness of this pandemic. Um, however, I don't want people to just look at the number of cases and believe we are somehow going to avoid more spread in the community. So we want to encourage you to all stay home as much as possible and help each other to prevent the, sp the spread. Turn it back over to the mayor. As Director Lo Lopez said, we do want to remind everyone to take the guidance of the health department seriously, and uh, this is for your own sake and for the sake of your loved ones and for everyone else in Lincoln and Lancaster County. From the very beginning of this public health emergency, we have encouraged people to stay home as much as possible, and if you are sick, to stay home to protect uh, others here in our community. Fortunately, most people who contract COVID-19 do not experience life-threatening symptoms and are able to recover at home without medical care. If you are sick and deemed safe to convalesce at home by your medical provider, um, as much as possible, you should stay in a separate room in your home and use a separate bathroom as much as possible. And surfaces that are touched should be disinfected on a daily basis. Just as important, the other people living in the household of a sick person should also stay home and self-quarantine to prevent the spread of the virus. You can contact your health provider or the health department's hotline for advice on your specific situation. The health department hotline, again, is 402-441-8006. And for more information, you can also visit our website, covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. The way that you and those in your family manage uh, your household and your recovery at home matters so much to the fight against this disease and to protecting people in Lincoln. 
For our main topic today, we want to shine a spotlight on a problem that's all too common in challenging times like these. It's unfortunate that in every crisis, unscrupulous individuals will use people's fear or generosity to steal their money or identity. These scams and frauds take many forms, and no one is immune. In fact, this issue, um, this problem, hit close to home recently. Yesterday, I received a text from our building and safety director uh, about an email he received that appeared to be from me. Uh, it was asking for donations for gift cards, and he thought it looked suspicious because it was from a Gmail account rather than my city account, and he wanted to know if it was legitimate. It was not. Uh, within hours, we sent out a message to our city team to alert them to this uh, and to teach them how to identify fraudulent schemes. And this afternoon, we thought it could be useful to share this example and to share guidance and information with the public in an effort to educate and protect them from similar fraudulent schemes. The Lincoln Police Department reports that scams like this are a growing issue in our community. LPD has seen an increase in the number of attempts to defraud people in the last six weeks. Uh, coinciding with the arrival of coronavirus in our area. We want all Lincoln residents to be aware of this illegal activity, and today we offer some guidance on what everyone can do to prevent themselves from becoming a victim. With me to offer that uh, advice and guidance uh, it are Lincoln Police Chief Jeff Blymeister and Jim Hegarty, the president of the Regional Better Business Bureau for Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, and Kansas. So at this time, I'd like to invite the chief to come forward and tell us what, what he's seeing in the community. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, and to the the mayor's point when we're talking about good practices that can help prevent all of us from spreading and contracting COVID-19, that awareness is equally important when we're talking about frauds. And there is going to be information that's distributed to all the members of the press to be able to utilize, but at the Lincoln Police Department, we watch crime trends very closely. In the infancy of this particular pandemic, we identified certain crime types that we wanted to watch, and we're comparing that to the previous five years average. That way we know that one year wasn't an anomaly and that we're actually seeing a true trend. And we are, we're seeing an increase in the number of people that are being defrauded in a variety of different ways. And I know that the experts from the Better Business Bureau are committed to trying to prevent that kind of fraud from occurring. And so when we look at these trend lines and we ask ourselves, what can we do? Well, the first thing is, is to be aware and to recognize that we shouldn't be embarrassed if we're being contacted by individuals intent on taking our money. And they're very skilled at it. And so we really have to take pause and say, is this too good to be true? And if we don't have the, maybe we reach out to our support systems, we reach out to a friend or a family member and say, this is what's going on. Do you think that I should be providing money to this particular entity? And the reality is, trust your instincts. Everybody in Lincoln has tremendous instincts and they're gonna know that this is too good to be true. If someone is using threats or coercion or something else to get you to drive to a local uh, convenience store to get green dot or gift cards, and then they're keeping you on the phone while they're doing this, it is a scam. Without hesitation, they're trying to defraud you. Don't let that happen. Um, and so I, I want to turn this over because there are a lot of different strategies and resources that are available. And I think Jim with the Better Business Bureau is, uh, is ready to talk to you about that. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the mayor and the chief uh, and, and really uh, the entire team here for everything that they are doing uh, to try to keep the community safe and informed. I mean, these are remarkably challenging times uh, that all of us are facing. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, while I'm disappointed uh, to see uh, the huge uh, spike in fraud connected to the coronavirus uh, that we're seeing, uh, I'm disappointed by it, but I'm certainly not surprised. In my 25 years with the Better Business Bureau, over and over, whenever our country experiences natural disasters, um, any sort of crisis, uh, we see uh, often offshore scammers and sometimes scammers right here within our 
shores uh, that try to leverage the situation to take advantage of the American consumer uh, and the business community. And the coronavirus is no different. Uh, the thing I think that we are probably most concerned about is an escalation that we're seeing in what we refer to as imposter scams. Uh, so imagine that you get a phone call, uh, your caller ID tells you that it's uh, the Treasury Department of the United States government. Uh, the individual on the other end of the line informs you uh, that they're in control of the stimulus check that you know you have coming to you for $1,200. Uh, they want to deposit it directly into your account. However, they need to confirm some information about you before they can do so. Uh, so they're going to be asking you for your social security number, and most importantly, uh, in order to deposit this into your account, uh, they're going to need your, your bank routing number, your account information, and you can see where this is going. Nowhere good. Uh, and so not only are people uh, demoralized by what's happening to them in their lives uh, with this scam, uh, we have predators oftentimes uh, very organized and, as the chief said, very sophisticated and good at what they do. Uh, and they have designs on cleaning out Americans' bank accounts by leveraging this opportunity uh, to, to pretend to be somebody that they're not. Uh, so uh, the tip-off to the rip-off here is, is that the government is not going to call you. If you, are, if you are receiving a phone call from somebody who claims to be representing the U.S. government and it's connected with any kind of a payment that you are due or they want some kind of a payment from you, you need to hang up the phone and report that to BBB Scam Tracker. And so if you're watching, listening, write that down, BBB Scam Tracker. Uh, it's a real-time uh, database that the BBB manages so that we can get reports of these scams and then share that with law enforcement so that it can be investigated. Uh, we're also concerned uh, with the fact that seniors are being exploited during this time. Uh, we're receiving notifications on BBB scam trackers of seniors who are receiving messages on Facebook that they're required um, to take mandatory, mandatory COVID uh, tests. Uh, they're provided with numbers to call. Uh, they call those numbers. And again, it's the same people that are perpetrating uh, the fake calls uh, from the government. Um, it's all designed uh, to create an illusion uh, that these people are looking out for your best interest. Uh, they're trying to help you either get connected with your money um, or with information about the virus. And as the chief said, it's all designed to gain access either to your money or to sens sensitive information, which will be used um, to get access access to your money at some point. Uh, so, I mean, not to belabor this, uh, but the list is ongoing. And on BBB Scam Tracker, uh, you can see all of the sorts of things um, that are occurring. And also, uh, at BBB.org coronavirus, uh, you can get connected with all of the different sorts of scams that are emerging from this crisis. Uh, that you really do, in fact, need to be aware of. Uh, so sensational emails, emails that are telling you uh, that there's access to masks, that there's remedies, there's cures, there's preventative things that you can do. Uh, those are typically being managed, again, uh, by offshore criminals. They're setting up websites that look incredibly sophisticated. You know, people are desperate for materials. Uh, they'll go to these sites, they'll give their credit card information, they'll order product, the product doesn't come, and the only thing that happens is, is that their cards are compromised and again sensitive information is released to people that don't have their best interest at heart. Uh, so we're here to help uh, you know trust reliable sources for information. There's so much information out there it's creating a great deal of confusion. We really encourage people you know love your friends but don't necessarily rely upon them for the information that's legitimate about this. You know go to the mayor's site, uh, come to BBB, uh, we've got accurate up-to-date information uh, that's designed to help people manage through this uh, a day at a time. So uh, with that, again, thank you so much to the mayor uh, and, uh, and to everybody in Lincoln that's doing uh, so much behind the scenes uh, to keep this city safe. Uh, and together, uh, we're going to get through this. So thank you. Thank you for that, Jim. And I just want to reiterate that we all must be aware and be careful and report any attempted fraud to officials. You can report fraud to the Nebraska Attorney General's office. The phone number at the AG's office is 800-727-6432. 
or you can send an email to ago.consumer at nebraska.gov. Again, that's ago.consumer at nebraska.gov. You can also report online at protectthegoodlife.nebraska.gov. Victims of frauds and scams can report them, of course, to LPD at 402-441-6000. And the Better Business Bureau tool, again, is uh, the Scam Tracker, and that can be found at bbb.org slash scam tracker. Uh, we will be sending out a news release that includes a list of tips on avoiding fraud and scams, as well as a list of those useful websites. This information will also be posted on our city website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. But the main message today is don't let scammers April fool you. All right. Um, next up, uh, I wanted to just, in closing, share with you some, some good news. Um, Black Hills Energy announced today that it plans to donate $375,000 to coronavirus relief efforts across its eight-state area, and that includes $50,000 in Nebraska and a contribution from that pot to the Lincoln COVID-19 Response Fund. Thank you to Black Hills Energy for doing your part to help get us through this public health emergency. Um, if you out there watching are able to make a contribution, however small or large, to the Lincoln COVID-19 Response Fund, please do visit the homepage of the Lincoln Community Foundation at lcf.org, where you can, too, contrib contribute to helping to protect and serve those who are most vulnerable right now during this time. Secondly, I just want to point out the window and say, look outside. It is a gorgeous day, and it's a wonderful time to enjoy our parks and trails. These parks and trails are a wonderful asset for our community during normal times, but they're so precious right now as we are asking everyone to stay home and to keep their distance from others. You can still get outside on our uh, trails and enjoy our parks while maintaining that six-foot social distance, but we do need you to enjoy the, uh, the parks and trails safely. We want to remind everyone that our playgrounds are, in fact, closed. And that's because we are not able to sanitize the surfaces ade adequately to protect kids who might want to play on them. Signs are being posted at our regional and community parks today, and signs will be up later this week at other local parks. You'll also see some signs that will help remind the public about social distancing uh, at the basketball and pickleball courts. You can find more information about enjoying our parks and trails safely at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. And finally, yesterday we kicked off the Sunshine Kids for Seniors Project that connects children with homebound seniors through art and notes of kindness. And we want to show you some of the artwork and the notes that have already been created. Um, again, children can have their scan notes and artworks uh, sent to the email sunshinekids at lincoln.ne.gov, and we'll make sure those get to people who are staying, uh, to seniors who are staying home to be safe during the pandemic. Do we have some of those images? I think, I think that they're airing. I think we just can't see them. Okay, great. Um, well, with that, I'd love to um, open it up for questions for either the health director, the police chief, or Mr. Hegarty from the Better Business Bureau. Riley Johnson from the Herald Star here. Hi, Riley. Hi. Um, question for the chief on. Um, has been the, the how much have the reports of fraud increased in that six week period? Your analysts, uh, as far as the percentages, Riley, is that what you're asking? Yes. I don't have the exact percentages, but once again, um, I don't know if you can see the slides, uh, it, but we'll get those distributed to you shortly, and you can follow up with me on a percentage. I'll I'll work with Jeff Peterson and his staff to be able to uh, figure that out. Great. And then a question for Pat. Good afternoon, Riley. Hi, Director. Um, how has the first, um, you know, sort of six days of the new directive health measure um, gone in terms of compliance? And I guess how much education have your staff been doing? And well, businesses and other organizations in town that have meetings. Okay, great question. We've had um, over 400 calls with individuals who are mainly calling in to just ask questions about how they comply 
and maybe some questions that weren't clear. Um, we've also developed signs for several of our partners, like our restaurants, that they can use for the takeout or drive through and take in uh, takeout areas to keep people safe while they're picking up. Um, we've done things with laundromats and a variety of languages that are used out there. So again, you know, we're really pleased with the compliance and people are really calling in to make sure they're doing the right thing. Just a follow-up to that, does the health department or other city officials anticipate there will need to be any sort of um, updated language to the measure with um, sort of seasonal gatherings like um, yard sales, garage sale season coming, uh, any, uh, uh, any of the, the farmers markets um, uh, that, that are upcoming? Uh, concerns uh, or are they addressed in the measure as written? Um, as um, we have been receiving some questions from the farmers market and we're actually working on um, some methods that we can ensure the public safety and the social distancing that's required for people to be able to be out and buy you know fresh fruits and vegetables but in it, being able to do that safely so We'll have some recommendations here early next week for the farmers market. Um, we'll be we're starting to look at the yard sales and that now, Riley. So we'll be able to respond to you early next week about that. But I would be encouraging people. We're trying to have people stay in as much as possible. So going to the yard sales and doing that, I think, would probably be a concern that we might have. Is there a community um, uh, health department, uh, Director Lopez, that in a different state or in Nebraska that is tracking uh, cases the same levels that we are or a little bit ahead? I mean, are, do you have peer um, sort of communities that you're analyzing to see how their, um, their, their cases are lining up with ours to analyze the measures that have been taken? We do, um, we have calls daily with all the health departments across the state. So we're kept apprised of what's happening in the variety of the communities. And actually we have a very strong network and we help each other out. What the governor is doing now is based on the community spread or deaths in rolling out um, directed health measures from him, but we also have local health departments that have instituted directed health measures. The directed health measures are very similar. It's about the same for Omaha, Sarpy, Cass, and Lincoln. Thank you. <laughs> are there any other questions? Any coming in? No? All right, well, um, we appreciate you tuning in for this latest community briefing. We'll continue to bring forward the most timely, accurate, and reliable information that we have so that you can continue to make informed choices as we work to protect each other and the broader community. Thank you so much.